like kind of got really sidetracked. And then it's very hard to catch up. And this class is really hard to catch up with. She told me that she's going to come on this Monday, so today. So hopefully we'll see her. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. OK, do you want to show me your drawing? Yeah, I actually, I'm, I, I, I did it last week, but I'm, I'm going to do the second one. Because I cut my hair. Just a bit? No, no, like I have short right now. Here. All of your hair is short? Yeah. And wow. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. It's different. Feels free, you know, just like very. Oh, it's really <laughs> cute. Really cute. And I found this guy that yeah. I wanted to get. And so I decided before I cut my hair, I wanted to do him. Yeah. Yeah. So I already sent that assignment. And this is my this is my sketch. And um, and this is my let me show you. Yeah, and this is my makeup. Oh, just a minute. Let me pin you because somehow I'm not. Hold on a second. Oh yeah. Good. And even eyebrows. Yeah, but I I didn't know how to do them. I'm just like, uh, yeah, I'm just like, it was well, a you, mess, but still to just the whole um, face effect is with curls. But, and today I am going to do the Ukrainian and Russian singer. He's a really popular guy. I'll show here. Yeah. And I did with the new hair. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, he has mustache and a little bit of, how would you call it? Just- uh, We call it three-day growth. Three-day growth, yeah. And I remember the technique. She yeah, like, exactly, so. exactly. And I need to actually go to the other computer and I saved that and I need to upload that onto the file. So let me make a note because when somebody else comes in, that'll be a really great, it's just a fabulous technique, isn't it? Mm-hmm, yeah. Now, I'm glad you didn't have a reaction to um, the spirit gum. Mm -hmm. And then one yeah. thing is when you're taking it off, be sure that you're not pulling, mm -hmm. that you let it dissolve. Yeah, it was, it was good. I actually use, I have the oil for face. Like yeah. Makeup remover oil base, and it was like very easy to. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's what the spirit gum remover also is an oil base. And then remember when you're doing your mustache that you're mm -hmm. going to. It's all of, uh, it's on, it's about direction. What I realized. Like it is, but what you want to do is alternate. You want to absolutely make sure you alternate sides. So you start here. Mm -hmm. Because if you run out, you uh -huh. want to make sure that it's even. And generally uh -huh. the top of the mustache is mm -hmm. lighter because of sun bleaching and even underneath mm -hmm. it's slightly darker. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the schematic that I gave you about how you put it yeah. on, it's like, it's like, you know, maybe four to six steps to center. And then there's a natural mm -hmm. place. Most people have a natural place that where there's a slight separation. I can't, he did too. It looked like. He did, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep my eye and then you can send me a chat if I'm in the other room. Okay, so can I start? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so this is, let me remove Eda's pen and pin Pam. All right, this is a plaster cast that has been, has a mold release of shellac on it. Now you can see, I think this is the one that bit the dust, so that's why it has these these you can see the difference between the porous plaster and the finished plaster that's why when i said Ida, that i wanted to look at it like this see the sheen and i'm not getting that from yours which is why i wanted to make sure that the plaster itself is truly sealed this has had a mold some a mold of a nose on it you can see the green plasticine here this is a plaster that I made 
to do an eye patch when we did how to succeed in business because we had someone that needed to wear an eye patch, but we wanted to have it be buckram, which again is the mask material that I showed you in mask, you know, and it worked so that it's, it is opaque from the front, right? But completely see-through. So in this case, we could make a black buckram eye uh, patch that the actor could see through. So we needed to build up the eye in enough place so that the eyelashes and everything had free movement, the person could open their eye, but it would be completely um, safe for them to look through the black buckram. So this is with a, a um, foil on top of the clay. And here's my clay underneath. The clay is just on top of my plaster, which is sealed. And then the foil is on top, just so the buckram, when it is wet, releases from the clay because it's dry. And then if it's stuck, I can lift the foil up and lift the whole thing off. And then we had to make a band around it because the buckram is rather rigid. So that would be typical for an eye patch and then an elastic to go around the head. This is a plaster face that has not been well enough sealed. So you can see that it has been used for multiple clay. This is a big clay nose that's put on it right now. But you can see that the, plast the clay itself is not releasing from the plaster because the plaster was not enough sealed. So it may have, it looks like it has maybe, you know, so a coat of something on it, but that's why you cannot, so I suggest three coats so that you get it off. And then again, the same thing, the clay technique was used, uh, the clay technique to create the, the casting of this. And then this is a positive mask built on top of this as opposed to a slip mask or a uh, uh, molded mask because this mask was built to go on top of this completely, okay? The advantage of this is that then were this a my mask, the mask would fit me here and here and be completely free so that I can see very clearly through it, okay? So it's a mask that is, the whole concept of doing this kind of a thing is you're creating a mask that the actor can wear that feels like their own skin. So that the mask is not gonna interrupt the acting at all. And there's a whole, um, there's a whole school of acting with mask. And then this is your mask without a mask on. This is also a mask of a character. So the point of using this elaborate process is you want the prosthetic, whether it's a mask, a three-dimensional mask made on top of something or a slip mask like we're gonna make, you want it to be as adherent and shaped to the face in the fit parts that you would naturally have fitting. For example, right here is one of the important fit parts. And for the nose, we're gonna fit here because this is a natural wrinkle. So you want to have the, the latex go to a point where there's a natural break in the skin. Remember when in the first theatrical makeup class, we talk about the five parts of the face, the eye, the forehead, the cheek, the mouth, right? So right here on the nose, you want to make sure that you're going into the places where the edges can be most concealed. And that's where you'll have the thinnest part of the clay so that the actual latex itself will be very, very thin in that point. And then you can actually make that graduation between the latex and the skin very delicately. Okay, so if it can work into a wrinkle, even better. Right here, right here, and where it adheres. If it hides under the tip of the nose and your nostrils exposed, that can still work. Because you do want to avoid having to glue all the way around the nostril. You'd really like it to be here and around the edge. We will try on masks, the uh, prosthetic with you can try it on with double stick tape. You can just try it on and actually have it touch it and press it to your face to see if you're gonna get a good fit. 
before you actually glue anything on, okay? So that's why you want to have your plaster sealed, really well sealed, so it's slippery. That's why I said, is it slippery compared to this is not slippery. So three coats so that when you put your plaster on, you're gonna be able to use it multiple times, okay? And you can see this one has been made even because it was cast at an angle. So we had to even that one out. So questions on that? That's, that's the purpose behind everything. Do you not, um, but what, what do you call the thing that you, that you put, um, the yellow thing that you cover it with, that you told me to use to put more this? on? Yeah, on top, yeah. This is shellac. Shellac, okay. Do you not put that on the, on the other side? Like on the bottom, yeah. You don't need to. Okay. We're never gonna put clay here. Okay. So it's, it doesn't need to be covered for any other reasons. No, right. it's right. just a mold release. So it's a release, so the clay, because the problem is, is this is very porous. Plaster is gonna be porous for its whole yeah. life. And clay, is very porous. Mm -hmm. Clay is wetter than plaster. And so the moisture, plaster will suck the moisture out of the clay and glue it to itself. Yeah. That's why you want to create this moisture barrier. Yeah. So that then you can you can have it come off and see this one also has had a has had clay on it before, but see how clean that is? Mm -hmm. How we can scrape that off. And I could take, even though this is a um, this is the same color of clay, right? I could just take this off of here and it would not stick to this face. And that's a really important feature to have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So any questions on that folks? I do wanna uh, bring up one other book to show you, which is not one of the three books I asked you to comment on. Those were pretty great, weren't they? Did you guys look I at I actually just bought the book I reviewed. It just came on Amazon. <laughs> Good. Yeah, excellent. I mean, they're really, they're, they're really rather remarkable. I really, I spent some time because this one, the Lee Bagan book, the three-dimensional three makeup has been an institution and it's making a life mask, breaking down the life mask, three-piece mold, casting hands, modeling tools, undercuts, modeling and casting large pieces, foam latex, application of foam latex, making teeth, making ears, duplicating for stock, casting a full head. And we actually did that, of uh, casting a full head um, when I met in class. And we did, we did, we had somebody that volunteered and we did them to here. It was really cool. Very exciting. We put the two pieces together, we poured plaster, and then we ended up with a three dimensional bust. So that was really fun. Um, but this book has not been republished. And it's I mean, I have it written 1986. He was a uh, makeup artist at NBC. There was no makeup effects for the longest time. That is a rather new designation. Makeup artists need to be able to do everything. They need to be able to do glamor, straight makeup. They need to be able to do all kinds of wounds, everything in between for all kinds of effects. And then they, they had to do prosthetic work as well. So that's why the whole Ben Nye um, series on the film about him is really, it's really the way that it was. And there were these dynasty makeup families. So the Westmores is one of those. Of course, the Ben Nye family, and then the, one other family. Oh, what is it? I'll, I'll think of it in a second. Anyway, those are the three major families. And so, and it's like, I worked with, um, one of the Westmores and he had me, he wanted me to work on a lot of other projects with him because a lot of times costume and makeup do not get along. And he was talking about, we had to do a burn. A, we had to find a body in a burn and he was, you know, making up this, I think we did a person and we also did a mannequin. And so we had to duplicate costumes and all that kind of stuff. But he always talked about how they did not really um, distress the costume. They didn't really make the costume part of it. And sometimes costume and makeup are at war with each other. And that's a really um, 
that's not a good place to be because you need each other to make the product the most successful. So it's Marv Westmore is who I worked with. And so Marv, had, his daughter worked with him. He worked with his dad and his granddaughter worked with them. So it's a really, it tends to be a handed down thing like, you know, firemen. If your dad's a fireman, your dad's a lumberjack, you're a lumberjack. So that says a lot about me and my kids. I have somebody driving a tank in the army. That would be my daughter. I have a grocery worker. I have, uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, it, but you know, it's a, it's interesting because these, it, it tends to be intuitive in some way and you see it around your home, you see it in person and you see things happening. So it just is a, a more, um, an easy way to look. So I didn't post this one because it is so old and it hasn't been re-edited or anything, but I will put it into your books as also just on your information resource pages. Okay. All right. Is everybody have something to work on for today then? Yeah, I just uploaded my design. Okay, let me take a look. And so Ida, you're working, you're gonna be working for your clay. And that was- uh, Yeah, I mean, do you mean like the design or? No, no, your design is fine. We okay. Have your design, because we have your great picture and your overlay that you did. Yeah. And that's really clear. Were you gonna like do a demo for us? For the clay? You want me to do it? What, what demo do you want me to do? Doing the clay? I think you talked yeah. about making a demo for, for, the, for the clay. Okay, notes thing. clay like, demo do notes. Just, do you just start like? Yeah. You just, I mean, uh, you just, yeah. I will, I can. That was very that. helpful last time. So uh, I okay. think that's a good thing. Yeah. I'll get the clay out and I can start and I can put it on here so that you can okay. see how we start from here, you know, you really have to just grab your, your clay is very stiff when you first get it, but see mm -hmm. how easily that came off? Oh yeah. So that it's really clean. Okay. Let me see if I can just do this. Let me just set up on the table. Uh, I think it's okay color-wise is just thinking. I could get a, I can get a red mat if it's better. No, that looks excellent actually. Okay, so here's the side view. So your clay is rigid. You need to actually, you can see that I molded this in multiple places just to get that simple uh, eye shape. So you won't have any debris. The best thing to do is when you get your when you get your brick, cut it off like you're cutting off a half an inch piece of cheese and then cut that into four pieces. So you're ending up with a small piece. This is a lot like working with um, nose and scar wax, but it's not sticky like nose and scar wax. So when you're doing a nose, you're not gonna need much. What I'm doing now is I'm heating up the clay, okay, I've, I've reduced this by four. Now this is more pliable. You can see it, this is dry and not moving and this is very mobile. So let's say I'm gonna just build this up. I'm creating a, a, a basic shape first, working with my clay. Now it's getting there. I'm gonna put it onto the top. Let me see if I can do one specific bump. So here we are. I'm gonna do a bump here and make this a narrower nose. If we look at the nose straight on, we have a bit of a width. I'm gonna make it more of a thinner nose with a hook. So if we don't need the side nostrils, we don't have to do the side nostrils? Not well, you have to you have to have a place where your where your latex is going to end. It can't just end here. Uh, okay. I will put thin, I will put a thin layer of clay here so that there will be a little bit of a space. Okay.
And the thing is this very forgiving, you can just really crunch up against it. Then when you want to spread it out, you just rub your fingers down the edge and you really glue it on there. And make your edges very tidy. And see, I can move this down. Wow, you make it look so easy. And move it, look at it from another side. You know, decide if you want it. Let's, I'm thinking maybe I don't want to do that bump. I know I was going to do that because who was it you, Isa, that had the bump in a different place? But I just want you to sh look at this very quick yes. because you will see. And it's great because this clay is rather close to the shape, to the color. But look at the difference between the nose shape now. You know, so we're looking at a completely different shape. I'm going to make it a little narrower there. That's a little broad for me, so I'm going to make that narrower. But when you look at it, you're looking really at a completely different shape than what we had before. So I'm going to add a little bit of clay, which you can do. So I'm going to press this in. So you're not going to be able to pop that nose off and keep the shape, which is why you have to like Pores this nose? I mean, I'm not going to be able to pop off the clay. Yeah, like that's why they do the negative casting, yeah. and then because mm -hmm. won't you lose the shape if you try to pry that off? Well, I can, there. There's no point in prying this off. There's two things that I can do. So let me just. Uh, there's two things I can do. I'm going to put a little more clay on. I need it to go on this end too, so I can add that and blend that in but you see well, the thing you're not seeing is i am really manipulating that you know i'm using a lot of finger strength to push that in and make those melt together so you do have to have you know you do have to have your muscle power in there okay so let me let me just hold on to that thought for a second Cara. let me let me just finish doing this Okay. Okay, now. Okay, she, now that is a very different image than we had before. Now she's equal on both sides. Okay. Oh, wow. And this would have some, I would do some more work on this too. Okay. So I can't cast this piece because I need to have the shape underneath it. So that's why I would make a negative of this and then pull it. And then I'm creating a space in between. What I could do and this might work is I could foil it. I think I'll try this. Why not? I could foil this piece and then I will try and paint latex on top of it. And let's just see how that works. I've never done that. I mean, no time like the present.
And I think that latex might even come off of this. I think latex might come off of the face and the clay. So I'll try that too. But this is such a small piece. I'm going to just, I'll just paint the, the three dimensional on top of it and let's see how that goes. I mean, without the foil, couldn't you do like put um, alginate over it? Oh, and make a foam like we did. Yeah. Do the same I, process I, like we did. You could do that. You could do an alginate. I could put an alginate right onto this for okay. sure. Yeah. Yep. And plaster it. That would be making the negative, right? But then we wouldn't need to plaster it. We could take the latex, liquid latex, and pour it in the alginate. You could, yeah, you're not going to, you're going, the reason why you would do a plaster of it is to give you a hard surface to, be, to create the separation. Because when you put uh, pieces together, right, you want that little space. Right. So if you just That's use the alginate, enough. you're not going against this thing, which you need to do. Because yeah. the idea is you cast this. Then you remove the clay. Right. And then when you put the new piece on top of this piece, you have the space of the clay in between. Right. And that's what creates the shape. So yeah, that's what creates the shape. So in a way, having the, the nose like this, is easier to see the nose in a way than the way it was with the two, with the almost same color of, of uh, clay. So now I will try and do the latex on top. I just, I'm just gonna try it. Okay. Oh, it open. Talking about minute folds here that I want to have flat. But remember, you know, all of this comes from necessity, people trying to figure out how to do things. It's not that it's the fact that we have all this information is just far more information than we ever had when I was teaching it before. You know, don't be afraid of trial and error. We just, there's, that's something we've got to have. When I start working wet, I'm going to put this onto a surface so that it doesn't affect my surface. my boot out of here. Let me see if I have my latex right here. Alternately, saran is great, but it's, saran is very hard to have it stick. So let's just see about this. I have no idea if this will work. Why not try? Oh, whoops, let me see who's in the chat because I asked the other class to. Okay. It's viable. You always want to check and make sure it's viable. What this will do is it will give a nose, but it will not have the filled in portion, which is built up right here, right? So I will paint this on and then powder and paint. I need to do at least three layers.
and we'll carry forth with this on Wednesday. How did Pam's nose work? So I started watching a TV show called Harrow, mm -hmm. um, which actually is very much not like me because there's tons of dead bodies. Um, but for some reason, this time I was really into it because I knew that all the dead bodies weren't real. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, it kind of blew my mind how they're all made because they have to be made similar, right? They have to make body casting or life casting. Right. And then oh, they the have character. to- mm -hmm. Yeah, then they have to like make the skin look dead or, or look like it was alive once and then like it's crazy. So they probably use the same process just on a bigger scale. Right, they do. I mean, body. when they did Planet Hollywood r restaurants, you probably went in one of those and they had all the celebrities, you know, or they do the wax figure. The wax figures are more, um, they're not cast, but Planet Hollywood, they cast a body and then they they sculpt the face based on Im images and then do something, a technique called hair punch, which is not a ventilated technique because it's actually since the face is latex, you just take a needle, a punch needle, and you can stick the hair directly into it, you know, with- Like a um, hair transplant? Uh, sort of like that. But since it's not a human, you know, it doesn't really matter. But then I'm like, their special effects budget must be huge yeah. because sometimes, you know, the body's burned or whatever, so it doesn't have to look like it. But a lot of times they do the story of how the person died. So that person really existed. Yep. So it has to be life cast of them. Yep. Crazy how much money they must spend on it. Well, some of those they can reuse too. You know, then you redress them. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is get a good even layer on here without, because it's starting to dry. So I'm trying not to make a, you know, a divot. If you, for those of us who are golfers, I'm filling in the nostril knowing that I can cut it out. Okay. So we're going to look at that. We're going to have that dry on here. I will then powder. I will do a second layer in between times. And we will take a look. Now this, it's kind of got a great texture. So that part's very fun. Um, this will peel off, okay? Trying to be judicious in how this goes on, yeah. It's like getting a hair on the fingernail polish. I'm a disaster with fingernail polish. Okay, so now we'll just let this dry. Okay, first layer, we're just gonna let it dry. The nose is completely covered. We've got our complete clay sculpt. Good, questions? How's that? Instant demo. That's awesome. That very, very soothing to watch. Very soothing? Yes, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Someone else is doing the work, right? <laughs> no, it was good. It's, it's always good to watch someone else do it. So it's, it's at least it, for me, it's a lot easier to understand what we're doing. Yeah, of course. I want to try, I'm getting a bubble right here. So I'm going to try and I think I'll try and get a pin. Hold on a second. And then we'll, uh, and then I'll fill that in uh, during the second go round because I, I don't want to bubble, but I want to, you to see what that looks like. So you can get, see the bubble? No. Right uh, here, I'll show you. And this layer, you would have to be really careful because this is what's going on the skin, right? It's right there, see the bubble? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm gonna pop that and then, uh, what do you mean this layer with bubbles? Like this is the actual appliance. So you want to yeah. make sure that it's smooth or it's whatever you want it to be. So the layer that goes against the face, 
is the layer that's against the foil. I'm sorry, the light is very poor. Oh, there we go. Is the underneath side of this. So the layer that's against the foil is going to go against the face. So it's guaranteed to be smooth because the foil is smooth. And now we're just cosmetically working on the outside of the nose. But the imperfections of this really work for creating a good skin texture on the nose. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? And then when we powder, and then I do a second layer, I'll, I'll decide how many layers I want to, how many are necessary to give it some body. But this way, you know, this will dry and we'll have something that will be an appliance that can go on. And then we can sort of shave the edges and do all kinds of things like that. Oh, I just touched it. Told you I'm a disaster. Look at that. I have to paint this again. Do you let it dry before you powder? Oh yeah. You Why definitely have to let it dry because you, it will just, um, it will lose some of the property. You have to have it dry anyway before you move it because it will stick to itself. And so you want to dry it. See, this is, it looks like it's firm, but see how wet it was. I mean, I mm -hmm. literally just grazed it and it's that wet. So I need to make sure that it's drier than that. If I did powder, it'd just be, I'd end up with gum on my powder puff. But does the powder stick to it when it's oh, dry? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Because you know how it sticks to your skin? Oh yeah, that's true. You know, it's the powder is going to stick to it. So now I'm trying to do a little repair here. But that's okay. And we will, I might as well touch up that bubble. Will we do that part as well, the uh, latex part? Uh, you will have a choice. So if you don't want to buy silicone, here's the one thing you can do with this, which will be, um, okay, so I see you. Make sure you show me your face cast, okay? Your nose cast before Wednesday. So you can uh, use the inside after you take your negative. You can actually paint inside of that and get a slip cast that is would be in your alginate. So you can use your latex instead of creating a two-part mold where we put a positive on this, sorry, I gotta get rid of this thing, which is in my way, where we have a positive that goes on top of this, and then we put the silicone in between, the silicone takes up the space, okay? So the silicone will be the actual prosthetic that the we prosthetic use? prosthetic is really, yeah, silicone is much more forgiving than latex, but I would definitely make a latex model first. Let's see how this goes, and let's make one of those first. But the clay is just to, sh to get the right shape. That's right. Uh, we, won't, we won't use the clay for the actual, for the actual the nose. Is the clay gives you the space between exactly how you drew between your nose and the other nose. Yeah. If you don't put the clay on, you don't have the separation between what was here. Right. Right. Because this is now giving us this really straight, more of a straight on nose than this character had before. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So that's what it's for. The clay is simply a vehicle to sculpt the desired effect on top of your nose because this is your nose. Mm -hmm. And that way you can make it work. And then when we get this off, we will scrape the clay away. Then we're, work then we're working with the space that's between your nose and the negative that is this nose. Right. And that's what creates the prosthetic. How come we don't, we don't do that on the actual face? Like, why do we use a plaster mask thing? Why don't we put the clay directly on our face and shape it? Well, <laughs> let's see. it doesn't stick well it does i mean it sort of does yeah. stick but the thing is is that first of all you're never going to have an actor sit there that long okay and the other thing is you want to once you do this and you take the clay away you can make as many noses as you want mm -hmm. because the plaster stable that is the face cast 
and the negative is stable. So you can make hundreds of noses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the face, first of all, your face, look at how mobile it is. Okay. So you're yeah. pressing on it with that. Your the heat of your nose is going to change the shape of it. It may or may not stick on there. And then you would then you have to plug your nostrils up to try and get the latex on there. Yeah. Not only then not only mentioning how it would be that close to your eyes and all that kind of stuff. So you want to be careful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just feel that my my uh, my plaster uh, nose is not doesn't exactly look like my real nose. So, but um, I think that's probably the case for most. Yeah, I guess. I just feel like if I use if I use that and make a prosthetic, it's not really going to fit my own nose if I would want to wear it. For, it, will. Uh, yeah. it will. Okay. See, this is my nose. I haven't cleaned it out, which I should, but that is my nose. You know, and I don't think of my nose as being that because that doesn't really feel like my nose to me, but it is. <laughs> okay. We all feel that way. Like somehow my mouth is going, <laughs> okay, not not at all tense doing your own face cast on Zoom to be recorded, right? But <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna wait and we'll let this uh, cure. I'll powder, and if I do another step, I'll I'll show it to you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And before we go, because uh, it is almost your time, but Kara, let's take a look at your upload. No, just take my hands are a little bit sticky. I'm trying to go to the, I just want to see what yours. Um, I don't have it in the week six assignment three. Where did you put it? Um, oh, wait a minute. Let me refresh. I got it. Yeah. That's my fault. Forgot I had it open. So let me refresh and take a look at it. And let me screen share. Do you do you mind? No, that's fine. I showed everything before anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. Here is Kara. There's your inspiration pictures, very nicely done. Remember, it's this character here, the Kathy and the Jamie character. Like Mary Sanderson, who is that? I don't even know who that is. That's our character's name. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay, and then here we go. And that was such a great uh, lookalike to grab because it just sometimes helps you with the character information. We see the elongation and the flared nostril. And there's your image on top of your picture and we see the side view here. See, and I didn't add a flared nostril on the right because I was using my nostril, but after watching you today, I probably should just include yeah. it and flare it out, right? So you could draw your line here, right? and then you could just curve it out and then draw this line in okay? so that you have it around the nose, okay? And you can upload that again. Yeah, yeah, so I would do that for sure. Okay. Draw, just, uh, you have this picture, right? Yeah. Right. So have this picture, draw, you can just slightly, and are you, you're not drawing, you should draw with a pencil so that you bring it down. I couldn't see with the pencil. You're going to escape <laughs> and then you're going to bring that nostril down. You, this is what you're going to do. I'll show you how you're going to draw that. You'll bring this nostril around like this. The tip will come down and this will come down. That will be the bottom part of the nose. Okay. So and kind then, of like figure eight. So it's almost like that. It goes here, okay. down, more like a sideways E. Yeah, okay. And then it curves around the nostril and it will come up and then it will end and it comes okay. down, okay? That's how you make a nose. Let me see if I can actually, I don't know if I can do this, but we'll try and I'll see if I can whiteboard it. So that when I'm making a nose, I think I can draw. Okay, so if I'm drawing here, 
Oh no, that's not right. I don't want a line. Erase it. Okay. I think this is what I want. Okay, so I can draw. You're going to come out around, up, down, up, around, create the nostril, and then come up. But you won't be doing it with your finger on a whiteboard in front of people. <laughs> I sometimes, I'm surprised I went left first because normally I would go right. So come, just draw on top of your nose and come around to that nostril. Come around under, up, do the nose down, and then do this one. This is slightly shallower, and then come up. Let me see if I can come down to it. Pretty impressive. So you can do this. And then I'll get the eraser and I'll try and get rid of this little spot right here. Let's do it again. So just just keep trying, you know. Yeah. That's why you have a lot of draw, draw them a lot of times until you get the one you want. So I, I see. I have to actually have it depressed on the The, um, it's not that you can just drag your finger around like this. You actually have to press it onto the little iPad thing oh. and uh, to make it work. So anyway, that gives you an idea of, of drawing a nose and you can actually make them broader up here. Uh -huh. No, that would be a little bit better. Let's see if I can erase this line then. It, it maybe erases the whole thing. See, it's not a very sophisticated tool. <laughs> oh, I think I get it if I make a break so if I make a break, and then it thinks it's a break, maybe, and then I can go around. When you don't know how to draw, you figure out ways to do things. Wow, that's really good. So, you know, anyway, just you got just play with it. Okay. So there you go. Oh, cool. That was good one. A fake nose. <laughs> just be, just, I would just say, let's try a little bit more to get that, the front view of the nose, draw okay. it here, here, and then you draw that tip down. Okay. okay. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Cool. All right, you guys, I'll see you later. You have 10 minutes to work together. Uh, Ida, the Google is the Google. Google Doc is live, so you can see everybody's appointment. I'm sorry they're so late for your schedule. Okay. But um, it's we've had pretty good. Have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Let me just pause the recording since. So we interrupted briefly to do a uh, nose sculpture and latex, which I'll go back to for the other class. But let me see if I can move go close up on you. Yeah, I think that's much better. You've mm -hmm. got a now a separation. And then mm -hmm. the thing I think would be helpful is to just mm -hmm, break up the color a little bit mm -hmm. by uh, taking a little bit of your maybe just character shadow or something, put it on your brush. Your, uh -huh. your comb brush, hold that up for me. You know, the one that has the little comb and brush together. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I think it's, I don't have it with me. Hold on, I'll find something else. So you can even just use like a toothbrush or something like that and just just brush a little texture into the mustache because it's a little- I have this. Yeah, but just do a little bit of color. It's a little oh. tiny bit flat. See how his mustache is a lot of variety. Give yourself a little more variety by touching the two sides just close to your center piece. I tried to mix my hair and it, it is pretty much like, the, like very... It matches your hair. It does yeah. match your hair, but I, I need to add more. Okay, I, 
Okay. Some the beard is usually slightly different than the hair. Mm -hmm. it, there's a slight, there's a textural difference, and there's just a little bit of a color. And his is specifically has a little more color. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to add hair. I think you just need to add makeup and like yeah. you're gonna color the hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So try yeah. that. Go slowly so that you don't overdo it. So it's okay. not powerful. And then we'll take another look. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll, I'll, re, I'll keep the pin on and we can record you doing it. Do you mind? Yeah. Okay, all right, super. Better, I think it's already better. Mm -hmm. Now the only thing, just a little bit because you don't want to have it look painted. Mm -hmm. Your scruff is okay. Now the next thing you should do, mm -hmm. look at your skin texture mm -hmm. compared to the skin texture of the opposite gender. They have a little more pore, larger pores to the skin because of the beard. Mm -hmm. So you can use your stipple sponge. Mm -hmm. Have you used that? No, but I highlighted my nose to make it bigger and this bones highlighted a little bit and use some color yeah so take a look at your stipple sponge just gently tap it in and you'll see it will indicate and give you little dots mm Something like this. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, darker.
Are you using your character shadow CS3? No, I'm using my eye, eye, eye shadow. Okay. My so it's dry. In products, it's, yeah, it's, it's too dry. It's too, yeah, and the color is too light. Yep. So I use dark brown. Okay. And so one thing is you want to make sure that you're not putting on too much so that you don't mm -hmm. get it to be muddy. It still needs mm -hmm. to be individual dots. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to see on the computer, but I can see in the mirror. It's like no, I can see that you're. I see a huge difference, and I think it's a big improvement. Mm -hmm. So now we'll. Um, I think you're ready for your selfie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it would have been good to have you take one first and then do these corrections and then take a second. I have it. I took it. Oh, good. Excellent. I should have reminded you. That's good. <laughs> good thinking. Should I send? Like both? Yeah, first. yeah send both. You can put them, mm -hmm. upload both of them with your research yeah. and your worksheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice job. You can actually upload this um, on top of your other one if you want to. I will add. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anastasia. Thank you. So then on Wednesday, we have the midterm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we reviewed that last time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just review that on the modules and I'm going to make sure that I contact the people who have not come so that they are on schedule. Okay. Sounds right. good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Bye -bye. Have a, goodbye. Have a great Monday.